you tweeted, it says, how much Bitcoin to get rich, fund your lifestyle, how little Bitcoin to protect yourself against inevitable inflation, bank runs, and fiat demise? Are you too late to Bitcoin? What would a 1% allocation do? Let's run through the mind blowing Bitcoin math. And the reason I saved this till last is I, I, I would, I, I loved having this conversation with you because I think you explained a lot of the concepts that you used in this thread. So, I mean, I'll ask you like point blank, like, are we, you know, and I think a lot of people perceive that with Bitcoin being currently sitting at $21,989, do you believe that, you know, that, that, uh, again, like people's like, oh, I'm too late to Bitcoin. I missed hundred dollar yeah. Bitcoin. What would your response to them be? Yeah. So my, that thread title is a little clickbaity, I guess. And that's partly the design, but really, if you read it, it, it really I'm trying to do two things here. The first thing is to calm Bitcoiners nerves because frankly, a lot of people in Bitcoin are extremely paranoid and they think they don't have enough or they think they're too late or they think whatever. And my first point with that thread is like, calm down. Like, I don't like, not even I, I don't think any of us realize like how early it is. <laughs> um, and I don't mean that in terms of getting rich, like, Oh, you're so early going to make, but no, I mean like as early as like, okay, you're safe. You're, you're okay. Just from a, means of self-preservation, not a means of excess luxury. Then the second point is also the reverse for people that aren't exposed to that, to kind of like pique that little curiosity and a little, a little gentle, loving little bit of fear and existential dread. Um, <laughs> because the way I would describe Bitcoin is that it's basically an insurance policy. Um, you know, if we think basically Bitcoin is like a premium free form of insurance on everything else as far as the monetary premium on everything else all monetary premium in cash real estate gold silver oil whatever it's like bitcoin's basically an insurance policy on that um you know and so if, if we think of all of those things declining the insurance keeps going up the value of the insurance keeps going up and so i i think the best way to put it is that basically an insurance policy is completely worthless until the moment is worth like everything. I mean, that that's why 2008, the great financial crisis, GFC happened so quick is because, you know, you had all these mortgages that were going bust and more and more were going bust. And then all of a sudden, all the insurance companies and all, all these rehypothecated packages that were insuring gets up, they all began going bust. And it's like, all of a sudden you have toxic assets plus nobody's able to cover. It's like that, that's when you have compounding risk and it, everything's so fast. And so I, I think, I think the way, to put it with Bitcoin is that it's just going to continue oscillating virtually near zero um, for a very long time until something happens and it just reprices to what it should be. And I think people get caught up in the noise, you know, but it's like, it's all noise, you know, a thousand dollars of Bitcoin, $20,000 of Bitcoin, $3,000, $60,000, $400,000, $200. It's like, it's, it's all noise, you know, like if, if we say theoretically, like there's many great pieces of work out there that say Bitcoin should be, you know, $10 million, like in today's purchasing power, um, how Finney in 2009, one week after Bitcoin's existence predicted Bitcoin could be $10 million, which today just for inflation, it's like $25 million. Greg Foss thinks 2 million is ridiculously cheap. I think, you know, probably 5 million is cheap. Michael Saylor's talking talk about 5 million. I mean, you know, if we just pick a number, a clean, easy number of 10 million, in today's current purchasing power, and we view it like an insurance policy. The way the way you could put it is that basically the political currency system and the diversified portfolio of assets, consumers, you know, consumer goods that have an exponentially increasing supply. If we view that as like a house that's slowly burning down and less and less slowly burning down because it's burning down at an exponential rate, like how a house is burning down. And we call Bitcoin that insurance policy on that. Well, right now the insurance policy is trading. Uh, let's see if we just say twenty five thousand dollars that's zero point zero zero two cents on the dollar something like that so i mean you know bitcoin could go up by a factor of five a factor of ten and still be like a cent on the dollar or two cents on the dollar it could, i mean you know it so anyway that the point with that thread and my general point in emphasizing both of those dynamics of how much bitcoin is it take to get rich and how much does it take to protect yourself the, the point either way is that bitcoin will probably continue to trend up with time and then there'll probably just be a moment or a day or a brief period where the free market or a series of free markets 
begin to realize that this is a risk off asset and not a risk on asset. And that, that's the moment I'm concerned about. I think that's well a ways away, uh, but I don't think, I, I think pension funds and nations and large corporations will realize that before uh, people do, before average people. Granted, there are people realizing it now, but I think the mass of people will not realize it until that insurance policy is already um, gapping up to where it should be. So anyway, I, I kind of went off the rails there. No, but, you yeah. totally did it, man. <laughs> people are loving okay. it in the chat. You're blowing everyone's mind. Um, so yeah, so then then why is it like why is it? And, and, and I know you answered this right, which is people think and and they think linearly, right? But like, why is it that you know some Bitcoiners believe that they don't have enough Bitcoin? And and I'll follow that question up <laughs> with um with. If you wanted an upper middle class lifestyle, how much Bitcoin would you need to achieve that? And okay. of course, and this is total speculation. Yeah, We're yeah, spitballing yeah. here. This is yeah, not yeah. financial advice. You guys yeah, no, none of this is financial advice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go buy a bunch of treasury bonds on a negative real yield. Yeah, do that. Um, <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, for, for the second question, let's look at the chart I pulled up. Uh, so I don't know if you want to pull it up when I'm answering the first question. Yes. For, for the first question, why do people feel that they're always too late? It's like, again, it all comes down to perspective. Uh, you know, right now, if you're like me and you're relatively new to Bitcoin, um, yeah, you're the last of the party because you're looking back. People five years ahead of you, 10 years ahead of you, they were all so much earlier than you. But again, look the other direction. Look forward to the future. You know, roughly one in 3,000 humans on Earth actually has a Bitcoin address, a wallet of their own Bitcoin and their own keys, their own storage. It's like, okay. Yeah, sure. You could be sad that you weren't here in 2014 or 2011 or 2017 or 2019, however recent or far back you want to go. But it's like, okay, you're still the first out of 2,500 of the, you know, 3,000 people. It's like, okay, you know, let's say there's 5 million hardcore Bitcoiners today, which I think is probably true. It's like, okay, there's another 4.99 <laughs> or, you know, 4.95 billion Plus, plus the growing population, plus the fact that global prosperity should increase over time. It's like, you know, pe people think they're too late because they're looking backwards. And it's like just people need to calm down and step back and have conviction in the long time frame and realize, oh, wait, I'm like well within the first percent of adopters. I'm like well within perhaps even the first like five percent of the first percent of adopters. But for the people that aren't within Bitcoin, you know. They hear me say that and they're like, oh, so it's early. I have time. I have time, right? It's like, maybe. Uh, we don't know. <laughs> um, you know, again, by the time Bitcoin has 5% global adoption, we don't know how dire the situation will be for the fiat fractional reserve system. Like, like, we don't know. What, I mean, what does 5% of the users of a fractional reserve bank? selling all their political currency that's away from their bank and into bitcoin like what does that do i don't know but it's not good i can tell you that so so anyway that, that those are the metaphors I like to use um but yeah I, I think i think ultimately what it comes down to is that people outside bitcoin are looking at its price and they think oh my goodness it's never been higher and it's like okay but you could go back to literally any point in bitcoin's history and that's true you know but one of my favorite models is that a wicked smart wicked smart that 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 Twitter guy, Wicked Smart, Wicked Smart Bitcoin. <laughs> his his model of Bitcoin's hyperbolic um, adoption trajectory and then overlaying price over that is one of my favorite examples, and I put that in my thread, I believe. But it's because it's basically the same thing. It's like Bitcoin was one dollar, and people thought it's a bubble, it's a scam, it's going to zero. It, it crossed a hundred dollars in 2011, and people thought it was over. It's it, you know I'm too late, whatever. And and it, you know, and people thought the same thing at thousand dollars. They thought the same thing ten thousand dollars. They're thinking the same thing now at twenty to seventy thousand dollars, probably. In two to three years, Bitcoin will be at 100000 200000 $150,000. And people will be saying the same thing. Oh, it's a bubble. Oh, it's too late. I should have been buying at 15000 Why wasn't I buying when all the Bitcoiners tell me to buy at 15000 And then it'll crash. And then they'll pat themselves on the back like, oh, I'm so glad I didn't buy that. And then it'll go up again. It'll be 500000 800000 a million dollars. And they'll be saying the same thing. Like, oh, I'm too late. And it's it all comes down to perspective. It's because it's like, yeah, if you're entering in in the year 2029 20, and you look back, uh, yeah, you're the last one. But look forward ahead. You're still within the first five percent of adopters, or whatever it is, you know. And so I, I think it's just going to continue. I think Bitcoin will be trading at like fifteen million U.S. dollars, and a significant portion, if not the majority of people, 
will still be saying to themselves, oh, it's a bubble. I don't understand. You know, it, oh, people are just scared because the dollar's like, it's a threat to the dollar. And, you know, it's like, I mean, people might think that's crazy, but I think it, that level of cognitive um, dissidence, hypocrisy and dissidence is just going to continue forever until that line of thought will have completely, utterly been shattered <laughs> violently by the free market. Yeah, you definitely don't want to be the last the last in that line of people thinking that either.